G'day, it's Mike from Aussie Mike's Bees. This is an important update on the Varroa response. I haven't posted anything for a while. Uh, in my view, it's been heading downhill for some time. As soon as the spread got to the pollination fields, the almond uh, trees, I thought the horses bolted. Um, and as much as I supported the eradication program and really wanted it to work, it is now beyond that. And for some time now, I've just been waiting for word that we will go to management. And this afternoon, I received the email uh, stating that very thing, and I've brought it to you here now. We'll go through the details. All right, this is fresh from the DPI, the Varroa uh, emergency response, and they've raised an alert. So as of the 19th of September 2023, today is the 20th, so this is the day after this was released, the National Management Group, NMG, as peak decision body for the National Varroa Emergency Response, have reached a decision to shift focus of the response from eradication to transitioning to management of the varroa mite. This transition to the new focus will take time. I won't go through all this, see. We're at the, you know, they value the, uh, the sacrifice we've all made to date, and there's been a lot. Okay, there is a link here. I'll follow that after. So, transition to management of varroa mite. The National Varroa Mite Emergency Response uh, has been working tirelessly towards the agreed goal of eradication since June 2022. Um, okay, we're shifting to um, management, so let's get on with that. So what happens now? In this interim period, the DPI will immediately cease mandatory euthanasia of hives in what were the eradic eradication emergency zones, the red zones, beekeepers still located in those zones will be able to opt in for euthanasia. Okay, um, I don't get why you would, uh, but that is your option. You've got some freedom there. The surveillance emergency purple zones will cease. So I was actually in a purple zone, so now I'm not. Uh, so I breathe a sigh of relief as well as will any of the smaller regional outlier eradication red zones. Uh, so all of those ones that sprung up around the state, they're now being uh, changed. So they will no longer be eradication zones, it looks. Um, they've given the list of names. So it includes Gumbel, Cutterbry, Summerton, Harperary, the Southern Pollination Zones, that was a tipping point in my view. Uh, Coffs Harbour, including Nana Glen. Uh, these will join the previous general emergency, as in the Blue Zone, to become the Suppression Zone. So that's our new word, new buzzword. The Red Zones in Kempsey, Hunter and Central Coast regions become the Management Zones. Okay, so that's sort of suggesting management will be the original red zones and suppression is everywhere else what was the blue zone and those ones we've talked about. So hopefully you get some detail. What can beekeepers do in the suppression zone? Yes, important, important information. Movement is allowed following a surveillance event uh, that is reported to the DPI and completion of the hive movement declaration. Okay, good, we've still got to declare moves. Uh, your hive health is your responsibility, as it's always been. Uh, where results indicate that mites are present, DPI will supply miticide strips to be installed in the infested hives. Uh, you can't go out and buy them yet. I know you can get these things in the post uh, but they're still not legal to use in Australia. This, I would say, is the only way that they're legally being used when you get them from the DPI, so take them up on it. You must continue to undertake hive testing. Now, this is interesting. Alcohol washing, soapy water wash, and miticide strip and sticky mat. That's a distinction there. 
Uh, as many of you would know, Randy Oliver has uh, advocated swapping over to soapy water wash. Uh, he uses Dawn dishwashing. We don't have Dawn dishwashing here, but we do have an equivalent. I'll get details of that. Uh, so you can use soapy water wash now and miticide strip and sticky mat, I would say supplied by the DPI every 16 weeks and report the results to the DPI within seven days of the test. And what can beekeepers do in the management zone? Let's move up there. You must continue to undertake the testing, alcohol and soapy, just like the other one. Report every 16 weeks to the DPI within seven days of testing. Fair enough. New South Wales DPI will ensure beekeepers with hives in these zones will be provided with miticide strips for a mass suppression event. Okay, they want to minimize the spread, so they'll kill what they can. Uh, free movement is allowed within the management zones. Okay. Movement of bees and apiary equipment into the suppression zone under permit will be allowed where a risk assessment determines that it poses little risk of spreading the mite. Movement between management zones is allowed under secure conditions. I guess we'll learn more details of that. Beekeep is in all current red zones, areas declared red zones up until the 20th of September, 2023, are allowed the option of voluntary euthanasia of hives and subsequent access to owner reimbursement costs. Um, okay, it's an option. I, as I said before, I, I don't get why you would give up your bees just for money, but it's an option. What must all beekeepers do? Right. Now, this is still orders. So this is law. We have to do what it says when this is the case. All beekeepers in New South Wales are required to complete hive testing, as said before, every 16 weeks, and report. This process is important to follow now that Varroa will be naturalised in Australia and any further spread needs to be monitored to provide industry with tools to make management decisions, tests, reports and respond. Hive movement declarations must be submitted to DPI on all movements of hives. Records must be retained and made available for audit when required. You can submit a hive movement declaration on this link. Oops, I won't go there. Uh, all miticide treatments must be recorded and reported to the DPI. New South Wales DPI thanks beekeepers for their patience and compliance as we work through the consultative committee for plant pests and plans for management. There's a lot to organise there. Your compliance is essential in helping slow the spread. You've got to remember, it's still only in New South Wales and every other state and territory in Australia are hanging out there, thought, we don't want this. But, um, so at least we've stopped killing bees now and we're going to slow the spread and get back to bees. Uh, so allowing beekeepers and pollination industries to understand and manage challenges caused by the naturalisation of Varroa. Uh, this is highlighted. The Varroa Emergency Response Hotline accessed via the exotic plant, all right, the 1800 number, is operational Monday to Friday, 9 till 5. For urgent matters outside these hours, you can call the hotline number for instructions on accessing the on-call function for the Varroa Re Emergency Response Hotline. Okay, that's something. So the new Varroa Mite Emergency Zones. So there are uh, two of them, as we've just talked about. The management, oh, management emergency zone and the suppression emergency zone. Different requirements apply. Uh, depending on where your honeybees are located. So let's move down here. This is a very, very different looking map than we had before. 
So all that green area is the suppression zone. So all the area that was blue is now green. And we're back in the, around that original Newcastle area and where it's spread down in the northern and northwest of Sydney, as well as up high here. So it's reduced the area dramatically. But as I said, you can keep your bees, so you're not gonna lose your bees. So what beekeepers should do? So with the word should, it becomes an option. Use the online map to determine what zone your hives are in. Now, we'll just go back up there, up near the top. You can plug in your address right there. I'll just do that right now. And that'll give a pop-up of the address. That's my place, so I'm happy to show you that. And it zooms in on your address, so you'll know exactly where you are uh, in the map. So that's zoomed in, that's my place right there. And we can zoom out. I was in the purple zone. And uh, my local club hives, Hawkesbury Beekeepers, the hives were in the red zone and no longer. That's good news for us. Okay. So back on to all registered beekeepers are required to conduct three alcohol washes a year, at least once every 16 weeks, to help facilitate surveillance across the state and ensure our industry remains viable and healthy. Beekeepers must report results of alcohol washes. Now, they're saying alcohol washes, but you can use the soapy water as well. Um, and you call the hotline or fill in the online form. I do the online form, it's much easier. They've got a link here on how to do alcohol washes and we've got an abbreviated version because at this stage, we're still detecting whether you've got it. When we go into full management, uh, that will be using washers to determine whether or not you treat like the rest of the world does. And you've got to report that you've done your alcohol wash and the result of it, whether you've got a zero or a positive. And this is the usual well-being. Um, there's a lot of beekeepers out there really doing it tough. Some of them on suicide watch. Hopefully this will give them some hope uh, because now we can get bees again. Uh, that's the length of the report, so I'm done there. What I'm hopeful for is all of those people in particularly the original red zones that thought that they were not going to be able to have bees for three to five years, which was the original plan. Uh, I'm hoping that they will feel a bit lighter today in that they can have bees again. Uh, the details of that part of it will come as time goes. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that we couldn't eradicate. But as I said earlier, it's gotten to a point where it was pretty clear uh, the horse had bolted, we were not going to succeed. And I think this is the right decision. I know this came from consultation with industry and uh, that included recreational beekeepers, commercial beekeepers, and the pollination dependent industries. Um, they all uh, basically by majority said, let's go to, tra uh, let's transition to management and stem the flow. But we've got a long path ahead of us. Uh, as, I, uh, as I've said before, Aussies uh, aren't familiar with what Varroa really looks like in person. Photographs are different to the real thing. So uh, I have friends at the University of Florida and I asked them if they could give me samples set in resin. And they arrived this week. Um, now, everyone else around the world would, would think this is a joke, but we don't. So in here, I can see uh, what five, five mites. And that's about a one inch um, hexagon of resin there with real mites in there. And uh, I'm 
providing these around um, the clubs of, New, of uh, the Australian uh, Amateur Beekeepers Clubs and um, some there are some spares for others. So I think this is my contribution to the education of beekeepers. And uh, I'll call it wraps there. I'm disappointed that we couldn't eradicate, but I am now relieved that we've moved to management. And I'm hopeful that good education, not adopting, even though they're distributing miticide strips, which is going straight to chemical treatment, I hope that the program that we adopt as a country will use integrated pest management and not go straight to synthetic chemicals, but to do the organic treatments and other mechanical treatments. Thanks for watching. This is Mike from Aussie Mike's Bees with a lighter heart today than I had yesterday. If you like, subscribe and forward this to anybody else that you think will be interested in the news. Thanks very much. Thank you.